and welcome to a special edition of ITV News on Channel Television on this, the International Day of People with Disabilities, live from St. Peterport here in Guernsey. Hello and welcome to ITV News. The headlines on channel this evening. Opening the borders. Jersey's politicians debate plans to allow air and sea arrivals within days. Good evening. It is the news. Surely everyone in Jersey has been waiting and hoping to hear. Almost all restrictions could be lifted by the middle of June. In the past hour, the government has set out its roadmap back towards a sense of normality. The announcement that Flybe had gone bust came at around three o'clock this morning. The airline's final flights had touched down just a few hours before that, bringing to an end four decades of air travel by a company which started here in Jersey and grew to become Europe's biggest regional carrier. Sally Simmons reports now on the end of an airline. Senator Mezek, half of the recommendations still not completed. I mean, it's simply not good enough, is it? If this was a school report, that falls below even must do better, surely? Uh, to be perfectly honest, I don't think that it will ever be good enough. This does leave parents in a difficult position because many will have been budgeting for this extra provision being in place from September and they're now wondering whether or not that's actually going to happen. Do you understand the difficult position that this puts parents in? Um, I understand that parents absolutely uh, desire and want choice when it comes to uh, education provision uh, for the early years. They were told though this was happening, you're now saying it might not. Well again we are working towards that policy. Is your aim still to provide this extra nursery provision in September? Uh, as I said in the States the policy has not been ditched, it is something which we are working towards. Good evening. As descriptions of accommodation for nurses go, calling it not fit for purpose is pretty much as bad as it gets. It would be damning criticism from anyone, but is surely worse when it comes from the man in charge of Jersey's civil service. You've previously said the accommodation we provide for nursing is crap. That's quite an admission. So a lot of our short-term accommodation wasn't fit for purpose. Thinking particularly about travel, the border restrictions have always been controversial, haven't there? There are those who want the border to be completely closed to protect people living in Jersey. There are others who want residents and tourists to be able to come and go quite freely. How do you try to balance those two competing concerns over the coming months? Well, I think we've learned a lot in the last year. We managed to have um, some uh, successful uh, tourism uh, last summer. These are bold plans involving converting, expanding and revamping existing facilities to provide, in just over a decade, three large new sports centres. But before that, new homes need to be found for sports currently at Fort Regent. So, at Oakfield, a new all-weather pitch and sports hall will be built on the tennis court, eventually becoming the new home of Jersey Netball. James Webster reports from Aberdeleice in South Wales. Well, tonight, the river level here remains high. It's fast flowing and carrying debris. The bridge here also remains closed, as are many other flood-affected routes across Wales. There is still an amber warning for heavy rain in place till 6 o'clock tonight. That's in around 40 minutes' time. Then it's downgraded just one level to a yellow warning until midnight. Right now, there are 28 flood warnings and 43 flood alerts, with the potential for hills to channel more water down to here. The risk of further flooding hasn't gone away yet. You know what, when you're walking around here actually, you can just bump into these world leaders as you're walking around. Earlier on I went for a sandwich at lunchtime and the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was just coming down the corridor towards me. They're not here symbolically, they're going between meetings and they're trying to reach agreements on climate change while they're here. James, it all sounds very exciting and uh, the focus over the next couple of weeks will be renewable energy. Yeah, so after these first couple of days where everybody's setting out their stall, if you like, what you then get is a lot of themed discussions. Each day has a set theme and renewables is going to be a, a key one of those. So there'll be lots of discussion about how to increase the use of renewables. So if you think about the first wind farm that we've got off the south coast, Rampion, I think 116 turbines there powering some 350,000 homes. Part of the discussion is going to be how do you go about expanding that? How do you make more use of it, recognising that not everybody wants lots of wind farms off their coast. That has only been 
to see. Well, I'm terribly sorry. We appear to have uh, lost the connection to Serena, who is working from home today. As you can imagine, uh, some of the Wi-Fi connections we are using at the moment uh, can uh, fail at times. Many apologies there. Now, put a piano in front of most of us, and the best we can come up with is usually a slightly rusty rendition of Chopsticks. Oh, this link. But we're a talented bunch in Yorkshire, except I can't pronounce a lot of these names. So don't be surprised to hear a bit of Rachmaninoff, a bit of Chopin, or even some Mozart playing around Leeds City Centre. There you go, you taught me something today. Three out of three. Uh, a trail of sculptures built from pianos that were destined for the tip has gone on display across the city, and some can even still be played. Michael Billington's been taking a look. Five, four... Three, two, one, hit the button. Yay! And that's the signal to start this year's Channel Islands lottery draw. Right now, those numbers are being crunched in the computer behind me, and we will bring those numbers to you in just a few minutes' time. But first of all, Father Christmas, yes. what would you do with a million pounds? Oh, my goodness, James, I need for nothing, my boy. Some interesting <laughs> interpretations of the Christmas story there. I love it. I think particular favourite. They were going to Bethlehem because there was a disease. Uh, yeah, I think they were actually going like, to get taxed. So I mean, some <laughs> of the parents might agree oh, that so tax cute. is like a disease. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and they brought gold, myrrh and Franken system. Oh, and Frankenstein, Frankenstein I heard as well. Yeah. Well, lots of I them did it. get it right. It's brilliant. You know, when we started planning today's programme, we had all sorts of ideas about going inside the structure of this bridge and going to the top of it. But the fact is, this bridge is not about the nuts and bolts that hold it together. It's about the people who the bridge brings together. That's what makes this bridge special. The people who use it to get to and from work every day. The people who it keeps their families together or the people who just enjoy looking at it. That's why so many people are wishing this bridge a very happy birthday. And that's the ITV News in the Channel Islands. At the end of the first week when all our islands are in lockdown. That forecast of warm sunshine at any other time will be an invitation to head out and make the most of the weather. Not this weekend. Staying in has never been more important. And when you see those empty streets and beaches, the advice is don't think of them as a cause for concern. See them as a sign of hope that we're all working together to beat this. From all of us here, look after yourselves, take care and stay safe. Good night.